All right, guys, we're back with another battle against Homeless Jace in the Wasteland. Playing Demir Control tonight. I haven't changed the list at all. Um, you know, last time I played this deck, I was talking about do I need Sphinx's Tutelage, do I not? But I, I just, I like this deck. You know, I think it's fun, so, you know, we can talk about optimizing it, and that's certainly something that we can possibly do. But I like the way it's set up. I like the way that it plays, and I have fun playing it. So, uh, as it stands, I'm going to keep it the way it is. Playing against rank 3, Chaos, and a whole bunch of X's that didn't catch the rest. He's playing six cards more than I am. We've got a pair of gates. We do have the tutelage, a reeve soul. I mean, this looks good. We'll probably just play gate gate and not worry about telling time. But we also have the option to play basic if there's a, a must kill threat. We're on the draw as well, so we could pick up another basic. So yeah, we'll keep this one and we'll give it a whirl. So uh, going back to the other channel, there are some other uh, comments that I received. Some people saying, you know, I'll come over. Other people saying, ah, eh, you don't need to do that, but. I find that the magic players tend to, you know, they want their channel to be a magic channel. You know, I've posted videos before, and uh, some people are positive, but overwhelmingly, you know, you get the thumbs downs and all that sort of stuff. And this guy's just gone. He must have had a bad hand. So I am going to, well, I already have created the other channel. It has a temporary name, Gaming with Akeem, but uh, that's only because I don't, I don't really know what to call it yet. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, we'll figure that out as time goes on. I can always rename it. At least I think I can. I hope I can. <laughs> but I mean, you know, the reason I did it is because uh, do I do I telling time here? Yeah, I think I will since I've got the uh, the ability to play tutelage next turn and not not worry about my curve too much. So yeah, the reason I called it you know gaming with Akeem is because lately all my videos have been called you know dueling with Akeem, brewing with Akeem, tuning with Akeem. I don't know where that came from. That's just how I started out in Origins, since I, I didn't know what to call all the videos. I didn't have deck text or anything already lined up. So, uh, you know, that's the temporary name for the channel. Uh, what it's... Ooh, what do we want? We do have a couple of land in hand. I mean, Disciple, we want that. And... Cruel Revival, we want that. I'm sure we're going to draw some more land. I'm sure we'll draw some more land. So right now we're just looking at a Visionary, but we are going to slam the two. Let's just get that process started. You know, we don't have Disperse in this deck list, so we don't have to worry about, you know, trying to protect it against Reclamation Sage or whatever. If he has it, he has it. He's got the removal. There's nothing we can do. So, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, the thing about wanting another channel is it's not that I really want another channel, but I've already got the setup, you know, to record. And I, I find doing this whole YouTube thing, I find it fun. You know, I, I like it. And so, I mean, the urge is always there to play other games and record those games. So we're looking at an Arsonist and a Mirror from Grill now. And so I wanted, to, you know, I want a space where I can do that. I mean, I don't care if, if ten people come over and that's all. I mean, that's great. You know, it's just a space where I can upload the games, you know, other games that I want to play and record them and just have a bit of fun dicking around with YouTube. You know, so uh, I'll keep this as, as you know, my main channel. Obviously, I play Magic all the time. I'm not going to change the name of this one. It's just going to be Hakeem Nine Two Eight. This is going to be an everyday thing. What you might see over there is, uh, is just see me, you know go on a tear with a certain game, you know, right now I'm, I'm going to do Defense Grid starting later tonight and uh, start uploading that over there. I'll uh, I'll give give you the link tomorrow or you can just, you know, Google Gaming with Akeem. It's a channel with no art and no videos on it. So, uh, you know, I'll do that and uh, we'll see where it goes. I mean, for everyone who comes over, thanks. If, if you just want to watch Magic, then that's fine and, and we'll split it up. But uh, like I said, I mean, it's probably just going to be me going on a tear with the game so you might see a game a gameplay of defense grid 2 every single day for like two weeks and then the channel might go go dark for two weeks until i find another game that i'm that i'm really in the mood to play so uh, back to that telling time you know we we bottomed the land and kept two five drops and we missed our land drop which is uh, which is pretty funny is there anything here we need to reef soul i think we just play the servitor and hold up the lifelink i think that's going to be the play here let's see what our opponent does I don't think I need to kill anything yet. So yeah, en enough about that channel. I'm, I'm really not paying attention to what's going on here in the game. So, you know, channel's going to exist. Going to play Defense Group 2 to start. Back to Demir Control. Let's see what our opponent is going to do here. I mean, I don't mind losing the, the Servitor. The whole point of that thing is to kill something and then trigger Tutelage on the way out. So he plays a Glory Chaser, a Gate Creeper Vine. I'd really like to find a language now. That would just... That would just blow the fuck out of him. Honestly, I'd lose my two dudes, but I really don't care. Because he's got six bodies on the battlefield. Alright, uh, hey, you know. Order received. Okay. So, uh... 
Let's just bring the pain. See what he wants to do about that. You know, he might block and send some damage back at the creatures. And uh, it'll save us some face damage. I mean, if we just languish, he gets to shoot at least three straight to our face. So he's just going to take the four. I mean, if you can't see a language coming there from a mile away, then I don't know. But we are going to take the three to the face, though. I was hoping he might uh, perform some tricksy blocks and save ourselves some face damage. And uh, we get to draw a card and trigger this again. We still haven't seen that fifth land. Uh, well, we have, and we, cho <laughs> we chose not to keep it. But, uh, you know, what are you going to do? So uh, we just picked up another servitor, which is fine. You know, if he kills it, it'll trigger the tutelage and give us a card. Now we're looking at some Rocks Maulers. We can't kill that with this. Top deck would be nice so we can Cruel Revival it. No, it's another tutelage. So, uh, it's getting a little bit annoying. Honestly, I'd love to double tutelage here. But I think playing Rune Servitor just so I can chump lock and draw a card is where I'm going to go with this. Because I really need that uh, really need that fifth land. So we got Necromantic Summons in hand. We're going to pass the turn and have a look at his graveyard and see what he's got going on over here. X Bane Stag, Outland Colossus is probably the premier target right now for Necromantic Summons. Although if we uh, if we get a uh, Rocks Maulers, then it'll be a 6-6 Trample as opposed to a 6-6 Can't Be Gang Blocked. So we picked up a Scab, still no land. It's just pretty annoying at this point. I guess with the Stainless Shuffler, you should never <laughs> you should never bottom a land. You never know when you see one again. I bet if I'd taken it, I would have drawn about 10 in a row, but that's a, that's a discussion for another time. So he's also got a Blood Fire Elemental. It's 4-1, I think for 5 mana. Yeah, and you can only sack it to deal 4 damage like at sorcery speed, and it only hits a creature. I mean, I think that guy's horrible. But that's just me. I can't kill any of these guys with Reeve Soul. I mean, I don't want to summon anything just yet. Well, I could just slam an 8-8 Outland Colossus in his way. I mean, I could do that. Disciple's going to get better, obviously, when I have some mana to sink into her. Scab doesn't do a whole lot. So we'll hold up Revival. I'm not going to summon anything yet. We'll, we'll hold up Cruel Revival. You know, we're going to take four off the Blood Pyre, but I'm going to kill kill the fuck out of that Rock Smaller. Or those Rock Smallers. Let's have a look at the artwork. Is there, how many? Yeah, okay, there's a pair of them. But it's a Rhino Soldier, not Rhino Soldiers. I hate that. See, they have all these plural cards in Magic, where it's called Rocks Maulers, but in the creature type line, they don't you know, follow up that plurality. It kind of bothers me. That, that niggles at my LCD. But anyway, here's another Arsonist. He's on two cards in hand. He's, you know, he's coming at us for 10. I don't have any uh, zombies in the graveyard, unfortunately. So this is just a you know, destroy target creature for 5 mana. Which is you know, not exactly where you want to be. But he's going to wild size and push through some damage and draw a card, which is pretty annoying. I guess I could have waited, you know, to see, to try to get the timer down to 0 0.1 seconds and try to bait something out. But we're in a little bit of trouble here now, because even if we wipe, we're taking three. So uh, this might be a disciple turn, honestly, since we do have one mana open. Or is it a necromantic summons turn? I think it's a Necromantic Summons turn. Do I get a Rocks Maulers as a 6-6 six, six Trample? Or do I get an 8-8 eight, eight Outland Colossus? What do I get? I mean, do I get a big fat Merc Lurker? I don't think so. I mean, we'll get, we'll get the Colossus. We're, we're aiming to block with him. So since he's got things like Wild Size, now that we know that. You know, we'll, we'll go for the 8-8. Eight, eight. All right, but well, we're on eight. You know, I mean, this is uh, definitely a bit dicey here at this point. You gonna bring the house, or is you, you gonna shut down? I mean, I'll block the four one all day long. I don't care if he uh, he's gonna hold back one creature. All right. So is he gonna wild size off the edge and force through damage there? Well, he has a course of might on his unblocked dude. So yeah, it's gonna hit us. It's gonna hit us pretty hard. Down to four. He's gonna pilgrim. So he's out of cards now. He's gonna have a land in his hand, but uh, he's got almost lethal on the board. So I mean, I don't know if he's playing burn in his deck. We can certainly go check and see if we're seeing any burn spells in here. 
I don't see any burn that can go to the face. No twin bolts yet. Doesn't mean they're not in there, but it's not likely that he can go to the face with any burn. So I think we'll just Reeve Soul both of his dudes, go to one, and have that be that. Colossus and uh, maybe kill him next turn. If he puts down a creature, we can play Disciple, tap it down. So I think we're in, uh, I think we're in good shape. Unless he top decks a Twin Bolt, you know. I mean, he could be playing Ravaging Blaze or something like that, but I mean, since we're, we've are we got that many cards into his graveyard now, is, is the AI taking over here? Because the, the decision making process seems, you know, really speedy. Is he playing Fog in his deck? find out. If he is, he didn't cast it. Alright, so we got there. It was a pretty interesting game, honestly. Except for the fact that I was uh, rambling, rambling on about the uh, about the other channel at the beginning. Hey, we're questing up. Finally got some non-archetypal quests. But we'll get in and do another one. We'll get in and play another one. So what are we at here now? Oh, 11 minutes. Yes, yeah, so we got lots of time. Lots of time here. I'm going to try, you know, a lot of my videos lately have been approaching the half hour range. And that's, I don't know, I mean, I'm doing daily. I think half hour is a little bit long for, for most people to consume daily. You know, I think there's probably a lot of people who just see the size of the, of the video and just can't watch it every single day. And then again, I'm sure there's people who love the half hour every single day. So it's kind of, it's kind of a fine line there. But my ideal time is around 20 minutes every single day. That's my ideal episode length, honestly, since, uh, you know, it's just raw, uncut, daily footage. I think 20 is fine. I know I wouldn't be able to keep up with any more than 20 minutes on a daily basis. When Mobius went on his tear with 40-minute uh, videos, like, three in two days, you know, it, it took me a long time to actually get through them all. I did, you know, I did watch them, but, you know, I felt like I was a bit behind on it. And on, on the flip side, when Legend uploads a video, he, he doesn't upload as often. So when he, you know, when he puts up an hour video, that doesn't really, doesn't really bother me. I can get through that once every now and then. But if he did that every day, you know, I'd probably only watch one of his videos per week. So let's uh, look at a one-lander and mulligan that. Let's see, no blue mana and a bunch of four or five drops. And uh, now we'll see two land on the play. If we can get that third land, we got double read the bones. And that'll, uh, that'll help us out. So unfortunately, we have to, uh, have to keep this one. And, uh, you know, pray to Aaron and Jesus that we'll pick up a land in one of our first two steps. Uh, what are we looking at? Uh, evolving Wilds. So is he going to withhold information until his end step? Looks like it. Did we get the land? We did. It's a gate, so we'll play it. And then we can read them bones. So what is he going to crack for? Green seems to be the color this year. The most powerful color. You know, it's got the enchantment hate, it's got the best enchantments, it's got the, uh, it's got everything green, it's got the best planeswalker. Green is where it's at in Magic Duel's Origins. But we're playing against Orzhov and looking at a Child of Night. So he's probably playing an Aura deck. I, you know, Child of Night is a pretty bad card if you don't do something with it. So here we have a Shadows of the Past. I'm not going to take a turn off. We definitely need to hit five lands, so I mean... You know, we, we need to keep some land here. So, select cards to put on the top of your library. We're not going to take a summons. We will take a flesh bag, though, because if he suits that up, we can kill it. So we'll draw the flesh bag and whatever's underneath it, which is a Merc Lurker. So no land in the top three cards of our deck. We were lucky to peel that one off the top. So Child of Night as a Piker with Lifelink doesn't bother me too much. Just when you start tacking stuff onto it, that uh, I get a little bit worried. So we'll see. It is a Stalwart Haven. It's a 1-3 flyer with a Renown 1, I believe. I wish I could press left trigger to zoom in on that. The last played card. So we've got a Languish. Languish is good. But we need a fourth land to cast it. Yeah, 1-3 flyer, Renown 1. So I don't honestly think I'm going to uh, play anything out here. I'm just going to read the bones again and go digging for land. I've got a nice, nice suite of removal, recursion, everything here. You know, if it's not a land, it's going to the bottom. And we pick up, uh, we'll put this on the top, we'll put the Merc Lurker on the bottom. And we picked up the fourth land that we needed, plus another non-land. So, I mean, 
We've gone pretty deep here. We've seen 13 carrots, but we've bottomed two, so we've seen 15. Only four lands, so I mean, those, uh, the scry on read the bones is obviously, uh, it's obviously good, but he's going to renown his dude. Still in language range, though. He hasn't enchanted anything. I'd love him to play a third creature, because a three for one is a, is a slam language. Two for one, you know, not so much, but being on 11 life, you know, I kind of have to. So, we get land number five. So, I mean, we got two, two read the bones in our graveyard. He's just got a wild in his. Nothing can be done with summons. We can hold up Cruel Revival, or we can play Shadow's Flesh Bag and slow him down. I think we, we Shadow's Flesh Bag Scry too, and then he commits a little bit more to the board and our language is better. I think that's what we'll do. We'll Shadow's Flesh Bag. You know, either way he's going to have two power on the board. I, I don't care if he has a lifelinker to be honest. That's, you know, once we get control of the game that's how we win. His life total is pretty irrelevant, so he's going to keep the flyer, I think that makes sense. Uh, read the bones on top. Our life total is already in a little bit of trouble. We're going to ship that. And a ruined servitor. Not going to do much against that 2-4 flyer, so we're going to ship that. So we're a couple of cards deeper now. I mean, we can always necro summons a flesh bag, you know, in, in an emergency if he doesn't play anything else out. And then save our language for later, but most likely we just hold up Cruel Revival if he doesn't play a second creature. So we're down to 9. And Child of Night, another one. You know, down on nine, I honestly think I have to languish. I'd love to pick up a land so I could... Yeah, okay. So I'm going to languish and hold open Telling Time. Plus we'll scry two. So, I mean, two for one is not where I want to be with languish, but sub ten, you know, we're underneath ten life. It's kind of... We have to. Do I want a seventh land? I think no. I mean, I'm sure I'll get it. Um, yeah, we can bottom those and get some actual gas. Plus Telling Time is going to go three deep. So, I think we're fine. You know, we have spot removal. We got a flesh bag in the graveyard. We got Merc Lurker to start gaining some life back when the time comes. He's playing Foundry of the Councils. Going to end steps. So let's uh, let's look here. Well, languish and flesh bag. I mean, I think these are too good to pass up. Thanks. And uh, I guess we just lurk into Merc. And pass it back. We're going to let down Cruel Revival, but he doesn't have any creatures on the battlefield right now, so we're setting up the lifelink. And we've got the removal. So, I mean, do I want to Necro Summons a Child of Night? I mean, that's something that I could do. That could be, that's a 4 3 lifelink. He's just going to Reef Soul the Merc Lurker, so he's playing the removal. And we're looking at a Reef Soul of our own. I think I'll keep that because we, you know, we know he's playing some little dudes. Like that one, so we can just kill that outright without having to spend a flesh bag on it. Then we get to scry, obviously. So we'll just kill that. And top card is a cruel revival, our second one. Um, we've got one, we've got another flesh bag, we've got a language. I think our removal is fine. I think it's fine. So yeah, we'll just pass. I'd like to pick up a disciple. She's uh, she's a beast, man. The card is insane. It instead is a reef soul. So uh, I mean, do I want a necro summons? Do I want a necro summons a child tonight? It's I mean, like I said, it's four three. It's outside the range of his Reef Souls, and it's got Lifelink on its own, out of the box. I think I will, you know, since I'm not going to do anything else this turn. So there we go. I mean, he could be playing Cruel Revival of his own. I think he would have cast it there, though. We shall see. See what he does. He's on five mana. If he, if he goes to six, he can all of a sudden start cracking that Foundry. He's just going to flesh the dust. So, I mean, uh, we just traded five drops, but I got the scry one. And uh, we pick up another Merc Lurker, so that's definitely going to keep that on top. Definitely going to keep that guy around. And play him out. So he already Reef sold it once. Let's see if he's got another one. This game is shaping up to be uh, a nice, long, slow one. If he's playing semi-control semi, semi -control over there with Child of Night. 
So he's on six mana. He can crack that uh, foundry at any time now. So that's something we have to be aware of. Yeah, he's just going to reave it again. So we get to look a card deeper. Uh, reave soul. We got one of those in hand. Kidian's Irregulars. I mean, that card's a fucking bomb. Honestly, that card is ridiculous. Reeve doesn't hit it. Fleshbag does. Picked up a tutelage, so yeah, we'll slam tutelage and then we'll fleshbag scry too. He's got three cards in his hand. We've three in ours, but we've got some really good removal spells in here. Alright, scry two. Mm, island. Do I want that at this point? I mean, I, I'm gonna draw lands naturally, at least presumably. I, I cannot keep them on top, especially when I have another scry. Uh, flesh bag, though. I mean, that is. That's gonna kill his next play no matter what it is. Plus, we got the Reeve Soul alongside of it if he does play two cards. And if he cracks that foundry, you know, he'll get in for a couple of damage, but we got the Languish. So he's gonna pass with all six up. But we're gonna start the milling process. And we've also got the ability on Sphinx's Tutelage open now, and Shadows of the Past is active. Wow, it's rare for this deck to have four creatures in the graveyard, but. We got a flesh bag, Merc Lurker, Merc Lurker, flesh bag. Okay. So that's instant speed, life gain, and uh, life drain. So yeah, we'll pass with that open, and he's going to crack it in his, at, end his, at the end of his turn. But I mean, if he hits us for two, we can just activate Shadows of the Past and get that two back. Or we can choose to activate Tutelage, so I think we're in a good spot. So he's coming for two. I mean, we got Cruel Revival. If he has some kind of pump spell or trickery, we can just kill something in response. But otherwise, I'm just going to activate Shadows and uh, get that life back and start draining him. See what he plays, though. What do you got, my friend? Six mana, four cards in hand. you got to have something that's playable. Either that or you're stocked with removal. One or the other. I mean, that's why I'm doing nothing. No, he's just gonna let it go, so we're gonna shadows here. Get that two life back. You know, fog those two thopters and deal two damage to him. Mill him. I'm actually gonna main phase the telling time here. Just because I want a land directly into my hand. Hopefully it's not a gate. So we'll take the, uh, the swamp and we'll put a reeve on top. So we've got another Shadows activation open now, and Cruel Revival, in case of emergency. So he's going to have to add to the board, if he just doesn't want to get fogged every single turn. 7 mana from Black White, what could he have? And, you know, we've got the two of Infernal Scarring. Let's read that card, I think it's plus 2, plus 0, and when it dies, draw a card. Yeah, I don't want him to attach that, because he'll get the dies trigger and, and draw a card, so... So let's kill that. It's not really, it's, it's really like a one for one, but we get a flesh bag. Uh, Reef Soul, we can actually, we can actually bottom that now. Because we've got one in hand plus two flesh bags. Let's go for something better. Let's try and find that Disciple. Or uh, try and find Airbus Titan. He's putting Knightly Valor here. I mean, that's kind of shitty. But uh, we can deal with that with, with so Actually, we'll probably just languish here. I'll probably just languish here. Instead of spending two cards. He's down to two in his hand. I think I'll languish. Shadows is offline. Yeah, I'm just gonna languish. Scry two. Well, I'll scry one twice. That makes a difference. No, it's not scry two. Rune Servitor. I don't want that right now. Um, telling time? I mean, I can bottom that, or I can top it and then go three deep when I draw it. So I think that's what I'll do. I think I'll top it. Alright, so we're at eight lands in play. I think I'm going to start not playing out too many more, if any, until I, again, I'll get a couple in hand. Just because Sphinx's Tutelage, we might want to actually start activating that and uh, ditching land to it. So he's going to dig up the grave here. Let's see what he picks up. We've been milling him and I haven't been checking his graveyard, which I, you know, 
you should be doing every single turn to get a better idea of what you can expect out of your opponent's deck. I should be doing that. So let's see what he's picking up. He's making choices. I mean, you probably want to make that choice before you cast a Grave Digger. We'll see it when he flips up. And it is a Topa Free Blade. But he's playing Despoiler of Souls. This is, well, okay. So he's got a Free Blade in hand, Despoiler, and a Grave Digger on the battlefield. So we're going to mill him here. we got two Languishers in the graveyard already. If I remember correctly, yeah, we do. So, we can Reef and Flesh Bag for five. So we can't... Uh, we can Telling Time, yeah. We can, we'll still have six up. So let's, let's main phase Telling Time. Doesn't trigger Tutelage, unfortunately. Ah, oh, God. I mean, I guess we... Take the Servitor. And put an Island on top. And then we can Servitor Flesh Bag. Actually, no, I want to Reef Flesh Bag. We can Servitor Flesh Bag later. I want to Reef. Actually, yeah. We can, we can bottom that now. And then we'll Flesh Bag. Scry, scry one twice more. We just can't take any damage. And he doesn't have the mana to bring that back at instant speed at the end of his turn and then hit us for three anyway, so... Uh, Necromantic Summons, I think we will top that. We should be able to get something good out of that. Yeah, we're gonna keep that on top. So look, I guess we can Necro Summons the Gravedigger and get back our own stuff. We can, uh... uh yeah, we probably Necro Summons the Gravedigger and get a Merc Lurker. But we'll see what he plays here now. We know he's got a Token Free Blade in hand. And two other cards. So there's the Free Blade, but we can Servitor, Marauder, Sack the Servitor, Trigger Tutelage. We'll give him a card, but, you know, I'm fine with that. If I wasn't fine with that, I, I wouldn't play Servitor in the deck. And we picked up Necro Summons, which we knew we would. So let's go have a look at his graveyard. Did we just drop in there? Is that Gideon? He's got the spoiler mana up now. He can do that at instant speed. So if I Necro Summons, he can exile that creature that I'm summoning in response. So we're not going to go down that road. We're going to Servitor. Then we're going to Flesh Bag. And then we're going to Sack the Servitor. And if he gets his uh, the spoiler back, we'll have a blocker. But yeah, that spoiler in the graveyard is a little bit annoying for this Necromantic Summons. Uh, Jace? I mean, yeah, alright. Alright, we'll hopefully keep that around for a turn. I mean, he could have the removal. He probably does. But anyway, let's see if he brings back his Despoiler at end step. Oh, okay, I was gonna say, I was just about to say he's not going to, but uh, it looks like he's going to. But yeah, that really, that really fucking shuts off our Necromantic Summons. Perhaps I should have bottomed it with uh, seeing that in there. And he could have a way to give it flying and get over the top and, and kill us that way, so... That spoiler could be a little bit of a problem. He's down to 18 cards in his library. We're gonna have to try and mill him out, I mean. Either that, or we really have to lean on Shadows for the life gains. So let's see if he's got a way to force that through. I'll block with Jace if I have to. I'm on 6. I'm, I'm not going lower than this if I don't have to. He's got 4 cards now to hour one, but with the spoiler on the battlefield, we should check the graveyard, see if there's another one in there. He's got Shadows of the Past of his own. There's no other despoiler in there. So if I block it, it shuts off Necro Summons. I think, honestly, I'm just going to sack Jace here. I don't want to take the three. I mean, that's a little bit too risky. But I don't want to put the spoiler in the graveyard. I'd rather summon something. Uh, we can bottom that. He's going to scry as well, though, unfortunately. So I don't know. I don't know about Sack and Jace there, but I definitely don't want to take three, and I definitely don't want to put the spoiler back in the yard where it can fuck up my necromantic summons. So we'll go with that. And Gravedigger. What the fuck is he getting this time? 
I could use possess scab into languish right now. Gravedigger's gonna dig up a Gideon and he's just gonna put it out, yeah. Yeah, I could definitely definitely use possess scab into languish. Come on, game. That is not possess scab. Alright, so we got instant speed life gain, but Gideon's gonna flip. What do we have in here? Draw by. Flesh bag is not gonna do it. What sexiness does he have? Yeah, I mean, we can get that gravedigger. Hixus would be a big boy. Don't have the white mana for our regulars. I mean, I guess a 4 4 gravedigger getting a drawer by Merc Lurker wouldn't be the worst thing. So, uh, let's get that. Alright, so let's just build a wall in front of his dudes. You know, we got nice big butts on our guys. So. I mean, he can swing and make Jay or Gideon indestructible and still flip it here, but he's going to have to lose his other two guys. So I think I'd be okay with that. See if he's got Nimbus wings or anything. You know, he, we see a reprisal on the top of yeah, on the top of his graveyard over there. So he got one for the grave digger. So uh, we're going to bottom a land, obviously. I think we're going to lose this one. Honestly, I don't think we can. Uh, we can get there. He's got his shadows active too, so I think we're in really bad shape. He's just bringing the house. Gideon can make itself indestructible. So we're gonna take down the dudes and only take two. Uh, I don't think we can get there. He's just a couple of shadows activations away. So anyway, uh, read the bones. <laughs> It would be nice, but we can't. Land, no thank you. Land, no thank you. But he gets to scry a few times as well. And Gideon's gonna flip over. He's probably gonna make my draw by Merkler her attack. Depends what his last card is, though. I really need to keep my shadows open so I can respond to his shadows with mine. Yeah, he's making me attack. But I can use the life link and still hold up the shadows. So I can't go at his life total, but... His Gideon's gonna attack me. Oh, Disciple. Hello, Disciple. Hello. So, I'm on four. He has the mana to activate shadows, untap, activate shadows. I've only got nine mana, so I really, yeah, I can play disciple here. I can play disciple here, so I got to give Merkler a life link. Then I can play disciple with a couple of other mana, and then when he puts his Gideon as a creature, I can tap it down, and then I can start activating uh, Shadows of the Past next turn. I think I can get away with this, so. You know, he can shadows me here at end step, which he should. Yeah. He's uh, he's hitting that timer, you know, right at the end. But yeah, he's gonna shadows here and hit me for two. And then he can untap shadows me for two again. If he swings with Gideon, I'll, like I said, when it becomes a creature, I'll tap it down with Disciple. Now he's bringing back the Spoiler of Souls. I can tap that as well. I can tap two creatures, so. He's not using shadows as fast. He's bringing back the spoiler. Well, I can block the spoiler, so I don't even need to tap that. Let's see, now he's going to read the bones here. Oh my. Can I get there? He's only got 11 cards left in his library. I just have to survive and let that tool go. So his life total is irrelevant, but he's got 3 cards in his hand and 5 mana now. See what he does with Gideon. Angelic Edict. We can counter that. I mean, exile telling time, I don't know if it matters, but yeah. Spell Pierce, no sir. That's countered. And you're tapped out. And I can block your dude. So that was bad. 
And I can tap your Gideon. So overall a bad turn for that guy. We'll see if he turns Gideon into a creature. Oh, he's got mana. One white. Don't see anything scary there though. So he's zeroing Gideon. It's a creature. To pause the timer. Holy fuck. Now let's tap that Gideon down. Okay, no attacking for you, sir. Ooh, did that get the concession? That got the concession. Ooh, that's pretty sexy. I don't think I have this game in hand yet, you know. I I'm close now that I'm going to untap with Disciple and a bunch of mana. But I top deck a land. You know, I do have Shadows of the Past open. So let's count the mana. We have ten. So we can activate Shadows twice. At end step. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. Hold on. Oh, i got to turn this... Alright, so we got 10 mana open. I mean, the spoiler can't block. Don't care about his life total, though. So, uh, we're just gonna pass with Disciple of the Ring open, all sorts of mana. Lifelink available. Sphinx's Tutelage available. Shadows of the Past, double activation at end step, if necessary. You know. We're doing alright. So he's gonna Shadows, which is fine. We can always Shadows in response to Shadows to prevent lethal. But he's only got one activation. And he's going to Gideon. What, is, what does that plus one do? It gains Indestructible. Okay, how do I get out of here? Okay. Alright, it gains Indestructible. That's cool. I can still block it. I can still block it. Is he gonna bring it in? I mean, he can't block. But he's probably got no way to punch it through my four toughness dudes. He is gonna bring it. I can pump up Disciple of the Ring. So we'll block, I can give it lifelink, I can do lots of things. No. It's indestructible, doesn't do anything. Alright, AI's thinking. Can it get out of this mess? Six more cards in his library. You know, we can almost get there. We're almost there. Wow, are we up to 37 minutes? I was just saying. So he's gonna Eyeblight Assassin, which is fine, but then we can just uh, give Disciple plus one plus one. So we'll get rid of the Necromantic Summons. Man, this, this game has dragged on a very long time. Alright, end step. Probably should have just activated the tutelage there, and we'd probably get a faster kill since we're going for the mill kill. But we got a tutelage, we hit two, we'll play out another tutelage. And a tutelage is guaranteed for two. So let's just activate the ability and we'll get two tutelage triggers for two each. Or the first one for four. Either way, we just pass it back to him and he does. No, the first one got four, yeah. It looks like it flipped into my graveyard, which was which was odd. But anyways, we got there. You know, it was by the skin of our teeth, as they say. But we got there. <laughs> Listen to me. Like, oh yeah, the first game was 11 minutes. You know, we like to do a 20-minute episode. And then we get involved in this fucking fest here now. And here I am with a 38, 39-minute video. All right, guys. Well, anyways, a couple of good games. I like the Demir Control deck. Like I said, you could probably optimize it. That you could definitely optimize it, but I like the way that it plays. I like the way that it's set up. I have fun playing this deck. Um, hope you have fun watching it, and check out my new channel. Should be live later tonight. Man, actually, now that I say that, by the time you see this, it should be live. Um, anyways, thanks for watching. Check out the new channel. See you tomorrow.